Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking flame energy effect using Adobe After Effects and Trap Code Mirror. So anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do here is we have to create a new composition. 1920 by 1080 pixels will be fine, 30 FPS will be fine at a duration of about 10 to 15 seconds. Just press OK. Once you have that, the first thing that we need to do is we need to set up a texture. So I'm just going to grab a new solid layer and I'm just going to call it texture. And then what I need to do is I need to search for an effect which is called gradient ramp. And I'm just going to change the start and end point to the ramp. So now I have a lighter color going to a darker color across the screen like that. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to also add another effect, which is called Colorama. Now I'm just going to go into the output cycle and I'm just going to change the preset to copper. We're going for a, you know, a flame kind of uh, theme here. So, you know, the colors involved will be dark reds, things like that. So that's why I've chosen that preset copper. Once you've got all of that, then the next thing that we need to do is we need to create another new solid and this is going to be labeled me. So obviously we need to search for the effect which is called Me 3. Now just a reminder that Me 3 is a plugin from Red Giant. It's part of Trap Code. So please, if you do not have it, go and download it so you can continue on with this tutorial. So now once we've created our new layer and loaded up Trap Code Me, what we can do is we can take off the texture because we don't really need it. So just click on that eye over here. But we are going to go into the texture settings inside of Trap Code Me and I'm just going to change the texture layer to our texture that we were using. And I'm just going to change the source to effects and masks. And now you can see now we've got this cool texture on top of the Trap Code Me, you know, effect that we have going. So now once we've got that out of the way, we need to change a few things. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to go and change the geometry values. So we're going to change the vertices X to 450 and we are going to also change the vertices Y to 450. Now you can play around with some of these settings and if you want to increase it a bit more, you can actually see what's happening in here. So the higher you go, the kind of more detail and those little lines that you have. But I'm going to be happy with about 450. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to change our Bend X setting. So I'm just going to change that to 1 and we're going to change the Bend Y settings to negative 0.5. And so now we've created this kind of uh, it's like a circle on one side. It's nearly like a, a cylinder of flame that you can kind of go through. So we, we have to do a few more things to it to get it to look how we want it to look. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to go down to the fractal settings and we're just going to increase the frequency. So I'm just going to bring that up to somewhere near a thousand. And so now we've got a little bit more intense flames coming out of this uh, cylinder that we have. And then the next thing that we can have a play around with is maybe the complexity. Maybe if you want to increase this to maybe five, six, seven, something like that. This just increases how complex this uh, model is and the higher you go the more intense on your CPU it will be. So I'm going to leave it around 5. Um, I'm also going to change the F Bend X to let's say 0.5 and I'm also going to change the F Bend Y to negative 2. So now once we've done that, now we've kind of merged both sides of the cylinder together and now we have this kind of center spot over here which is kind of delivering our flames and I think that looks pretty cool but now we have to make it move. So to add some animation to this, what we're going to do is I'm just going to hold option on my keyboard and then click on the evolution stopwatch and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to write time times five and so if you've done that correctly, now you will have some cool kind of flame effect that's going on on the outside. And we need to add something else which is going to be on the offset Y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold uh, on my Mac, I'm going to hold option 
click on offset Y and I'm going to write time times negative 5. And so now if you've done that correctly, now you will have this cool flaming animation effect going from that center point and I think that's looking pretty cool. But there are a few other things that we need to change up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the individual amplitude and I'm going to play around with some of these settings. So amplitude X, I'm going to play around with it, but I think somewhere around 80 looks fairly decent and also amplitude Z. So how much of a ball or how many of these things do you want to come out? So I think I'm going to kind of maybe lower it down maybe somewhere around maybe 65, 60, something like that. I think that looks pretty cool. So the next thing that we need to do is I'm just going to close that up. I'm going to come to the material settings and I'm just going to change the opacity. I'm going to drop it down to 80%. And so now it kind of uniforms the color together a little bit more. So now once we have that, before we do any of the shading, uh, which is very CPU intense, I'm just going to play around with some of the camera options. So I'm going to create a new camera. I'm going to maybe change it to about a 35 mil camera. I'll just press OK. Then what I'm going to do is I'll just open up the transform options and I'm going to play around with the position. So the first thing that I'm going to do in the position is I'm just going to set that final value over there to zero. And now what I can do is I can now move this value over here. So let's say, for example, I bring it down to maybe something like that. And now it's off center. So what I need to do is I just need to play around with this. So I'll change that value to about 30. And you can really play around with this as well. Like how much of it do you want? And so once we have that, now I've got this cool kind of ball effect, you know, that has all the flame inside of it. I think that looks pretty cool. So then we'll come down to our camera options. And again, I'm just going to change a few things here. So firstly, the zoom, maybe we will bring it down to somewhere around a thousand. And then what we can do is because we've brought that down, we can go back to our position and we can kind of bring it up as well. So now it looks more like a, like a cylinder and you've got that you know, big part in the middle. So I'm just going to play around with that setting. So it's just sitting inside of my uh, composition nicely. And I think that looks pretty cool, but maybe just a touch, you know, zoomed in too much. So I'm just going to bring it down just to make sure that the edges don't go over and outside the composition. And so there we have this really cool kind of effect there. Um, I'm just going to also change up a few other things so you can play around with you know maybe like the aperture or the focus distance if you want there's heaps of stuff you can play around in there so now once we've put our camera in the next thing that we can do is we can add a light so the first thing that we need to do is we need to change the color so i'm just going to color hunt here and i'm using this color scheme and so once you've changed that, then we can play around with some of the intensity and we can do that a little bit later and we can change uh, the light type. So maybe we can play around with the ambient or the point light. I'm going to click ambient for now, press OK. And then if I open up the, the light options, what I can do is I can play around with some of the intensity. So if you want that kind of core glowing in the middle, then you can increase the intensity a bit. So I'll probably go with something like 130, something like that. Or you can even change the options uh, as well and put in another light if you want. So once we have that, the next thing that we need to do is we need to add some glow to our uh, flame. So I'm going to come over here, add some glow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the radius to about 60. And then I'm just going to bring down the glow intensity to about maybe 0.4. And then I'm going to duplicate that again. And on the second one, I will change the glow intensity to about 0.1. And now it's obviously too intense there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop down that opacity maybe to about 85 just so we can kind of see that 
intense bit in the middle so that's obviously the hotter bit of this flame so now once i have that now we can get into the cpu intensive stuff so what we need to do is go back into mir and i need to change a few things so once we go into shader so i'll just close up all of these and i'm going to open up the shader settings i'm going to change the first thing to from draw to front fill back wire and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the blend mode to super add and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the depth buff to on and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the normal effect to about 25 and the final thing that i can do is just increase the line size to maybe 2 2.5 3 something like that so now once we put all the shader settings on now my macbook pro is really struggling to display this uh, flame so i really don't want to touch it any more than that but you can go back and change your ambient lighting or change your camera things like that but to wrap this video up the final things that i'm going to do is i'm going to add a new solid and i'm going to call it bg and i'm just going to put it at the bottom of all of my layers and then i'm going to search for the effect called gradient ramp and what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to go back to color hunt and i'm going to get that maroon color and i'm going to put it back into our gradient ramp so i'm just going to change the white settings over here and i'm just going to put that color in there and then i'm also going to change it to a radial ramp and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to zoom out a bit and i'm going to set or well, first i'm going to swap the colors and then i'm going to set the top color to be up here and the black to maybe be around here somewhere so now once we've got our gradient ramp on we just need to go to our mirror layer and we just need to change uh, the blend mode to screen and if you don't see that you can always go toggle switches and now the final thing that we can add is we can add a adjustment layer and in the adjustment layer we're just going to add some noise so i'll bump up the noise to around 10 percent and the last thing that we can do to our mirror layer is just add some curves so i'm just going to add the effect curves here and i'm just going to create a small little s bend that will kind of tie everything together and so that's pretty much it for this tutorial now yes i know that sometimes on people's computers it's going to be get a little bit intense so just be mindful of that and by the way like you can change whatever you like and you can create whatever you want so i was trying to do this with um a, a 4k composition setting and it really changed everything so make sure you play around and see what results you can get anyways thanks for watching your short tutorial on how to create an energy ball effect using adobe after effects and trap code hope you learned something thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video